Hey folks, JD here, and apologies for any sort of background noise. I've got my 3D printer just printing out there, and uh, I thought we would have finished by now, but unfortunately it hasn't. So um, i got to carry on and make these anyway. So uh, that's what that noise is, if you can hear it. If you can't, great. So uh, today I thought I wanted to talk you through resin printing and some accessories you may need. If you're thinking about getting a 3D resin printer, I've had mine now, my Elegoo Mars, for about a week. And... There were a few surprises for in it for me uh, when I got it, and actually turned out I needed to get quite a few accessories so that when I had finished printing, I could then go from the printing stage to the washing stage to the drying stage, then to the curing stage, and have all that done and dusted within uh, an hour or so, depending on print size, everything else. So today I wanted to just talk you through the things that I bought along with this printer. Just so that if you're thinking about getting the same or getting a resin printer, then you have a full list of things that you might need. Obviously, I implore you to look at other people's videos as well. Uh, but at the same time, this, this is just the things that I have used. And I will talk you through why I'm using these in a couple of minutes. All right. What I'm going to do is twist this camera around and then let's have a chat about these things. Okay, so I haven't just swapped the... Uh the, the camera around my camera battery actually died so now I've just I've gone for the head cam instead this may actually show me a little bit more of what I'm wanting to show you so the first thing you're going to need before you do anything before you even decided what you're going to print is you're going to need some good gloves now these are nitro gloves you need to have them powder free and you need to have them thick enough to withstand the isopropyl alcohol and the resin and these from what I've read online these will do it and so far you can see how many I've gone through there's a hundred in the pack and if, if you've bought any of these in the past you will know these as soon as you take the, the, the tag off these overflow so these are always packed really nice and tight and I've used an absolute load of them it's good to know before you handle anything you have them on uh, I'm gonna handle this before I'm gonna put this on before I handle the isopropyl alcohol because I've been touching that and everything else and with gloves on that have probably had resin on etc etc so these are good to have you're going to need them you really seriously are going to need them and you're going to need to have a place to dispose of them as well so what I do is I have a spare carrier bag up here and then I, I twist tie the carrier bag after every single time I've used I've, I've, I've touched any resin or anything at all I Tie, it, tie the bag off and put it straight out in the bin quite simply because I don't want this to be lying around in any bin or anything like that in the house another thing you're going to need so you're you you've, you've printed now you've got your first print you're going to need some isopropyl alcohol and this is to wash your resin print because when you have the resin you leave it you leave it up like that and just to drip for about five or ten minutes after that you need to get off a layer of resin from the top because don't forget your print is being dunked directly into the vat of resin there so you are when as, every time it comes up it is going to be dripping full of uh, full of resin and there is a a layer which seals the the model or whatever you're printing and you need to get that layer off so what i do i i've i've devised a little because uh, i haven't got a lot of room here as, as as you can see i've devised myself a little plan and that's this plan is such so i use a mason jar such as this and i use an isopropyl alcohol 99.9 percent .9%. now you can go for any make i've only gone for that because it's lab grade and it was cheap on amazon that was it i think it was eight pound for a liter so i thought i'd go for that and to be fair i've bought in the last week because i've been ramming prints so much from this i've actually bought two bottles of this now what i do is if i show you this i have got a mason jar here already with isopropyl alcohol in now there is no fumes that comes out of this you can see there is a nice sort of layer inside there to stop anything coming out and obviously it shuts down really nice and thick another way you can see that is because the line I drew a week ago when I did this is still at exactly the same level, so nothing has evaporated. Plus, there's no heavy smells in here, and I will I will replace that when it gets too cloudy and when it gets too bad. Now I can still see through it for the second, so I'm not going to be replacing that anytime soon. So let's put that away. Everything that I use for my resin printing, by the way, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's all inside of this drawer down here. My resin, which is still in the bags it came in isopropyl alcohol and my mason jars as well are all in the bottom drawer now so that's what you need that's what i do so whenever i print something off have i got something i printed yes i have i've got my skull that i printed it's a it's a terminator t-rex skull not my own design uh, but i've always been fascinated by this so i pr printed it in gray and i've just given it one layer of uh, of undercoat and when that came out literally i dunked it inside there 
swished it around, left it inside there for five to ten minutes, and then took it out, and then just you know just washed it then and then just ensure that it was okay then cured it in my little curing box so that's that's one example of of me using this it's not so good for say these prints this is harry potter's hogwarts castle miniaturized massively miniaturized and it is as you can see it's still got a little you know a little way to go before i can uh, i can get all that nice and nice and painted but um that won't fit so I've got myself a second box here which I then dunk that into again the box the plastic box is thick enough to withhold the isopropyl alcohol and not eat through it so I haven't got it to worry about anything there so that's two things you're gonna need isopropyl sorry three things gloves isopropyl alcohol and somewhere to put your your isopropyl alcohol to, to make sure that your resin prints that you've got are going to yeah, are gonna wash properly what you've got to remember in doing this and I've got to be very careful every single time is whenever there's a print in here which has newly come off the off the bed it's going to be quite thin it's going to be quite brittle so you don't want to be sloshing it around really heavily you just want to be taking your time with it making sure that everything all the isopropyl alcohol washes over the print without there being any issues all nice and ensure that you get a nice all, all that horrible resin off I've also brought another thing which is this this is a, uh, a solar powered turntable as you can see as soon as any light hits the solar panels on the outside it starts to turn. The reason for this is that I have that inside my curing box and then I have say that for argument's sake inside the curing box and then you can't see it here but with the UV light and with the foil underneath the light bounces back hits the solar panel and this continues to turn. Essentially it is as easy as that. That was about six pound very very simple. Kitchen roll or toilet paper just to make sure you wipe everything down. That's what I use as well. Now I am going to get, I have got an order some really thick industrial um, industrial wipes that don't that don't um, speckle on the uh, on on the mold. So you're not going to get any white lumps or anything like that on the mold. Uh, I've still waiting those to come out, unfortunately, but they are going to be here soon, hopefully. So there we go. So there's a few things that you're going to need, and obviously space then to uh, to, to 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 cure. Now, as far as the curing process goes, what I have done, and it's what I can see a lot of people have done. I have bought. Let me get all this. I have bought this. So this is a nail, a UV nail curing, um, curing box. I've taken the bit off here, which is the bit that the Hogwarts castle is on, and that slots inside there for you to put your hand in. Obviously what I've done then is I've created my own box. I'm in halfway through doing this, so essentially I've cut a hole out of my Elegoo Mars box because it's nice and thick. Um, nice and thick cardboard. I'm going to line the inside all with, all with foil, uh, and I'm going to line the top with foil as well so that just anything any UV light just bounces off and then I'm going to cover the front here so that all the light just goes down and then that's going to be my curing box for larger scale prints so I can start doing three and four piece together prints so that's that so with the curing box with the UV nail uh, box with the gloves the isopropyl alcohol the three mason jars that I bought the UV turntable for the, the curing box as well as um, the industrial rolls that you can't see because they're not here yet. Uh, it was probably about another, looking at about another £50 on top of the price of this. It's going now into the £300 mark. That's everything that you need before you set off. So what I would ensure, I would ensure that everything that you have done here um, you know exactly what it is that you you want to buy beforehand. Now I will list all these in the description. Should you want to uh, should you want to see it, and um, that therefore know exactly what to buy or what supplies to get. So far, I'm very happy with all of this. The, the isopropyl alcohol is working really well. Well, it's it's just standard alcohol, ninety nine point nine percent. It's making the 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 um, all the models come out really nice and it's washing them really well so I'm very happy with it so I haven't got any downsides on that at all. Uh, same for the gloves 
nothing has leaked through onto my hands so therefore I class it as a win. Um, as for ventilation I've got a huge window in front of me here so that's always open as well as my window here to my left that's always open as well and I find that that is generally enough that I need. If I have this window closed then I can certainly notice a hell of a difference. The air is thick, the air is heavy but as soon as I have that window open then I everything tends to be fine. So there we go there are just a few things that you need so you need to have ventilation but that's obviously from a window. You need to have some gloves, isopropyl alcohol, somewhere to wash your prints, uh, as well as a little turntable if you wanted to have that inside your curing box so that as it turns the UV light hits every possible aspect, as well as a UV box as well so that you can cure those prints properly. All right, my friends, well, I'm going to leave that there. Let us know how you're getting on with the 3D resin prints. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and ring that bell too. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy printing.